Hi, I'm Katie Halcrow with Power Up Prep, and I'm super excited today to take you through some tips and strategies to help you power up your ACT. If this is your first time with us, first, welcome. Second, check out the link below. There, you're going to find the ACT questions and the note sheets that you can do along with these videos. All right, so let's get those materials together and we're gonna be ready to power up. All right, we're back. We just did the first three strategies for the math section and that were, those were use your calculator, guess and check using the answer choices, and also um, if there are variables in the question and the answer choices, then plug in real numbers. Okay, so we did those three strategies. Now we're moving on to two more strategies. The first of those strategies is that pictures are your friends. So you want to use pictures whenever possible. So part A of this is that if you have a word problem, I want you to draw a picture for the word problem. For example, like let's look at this one. If the perimeter of a fence is 90 meters and the length is 15 meters longer than the width, what's the length of the fence? So what I would want you to do is draw a rectangle that would represent a fence and then label the length and label the width. Even if you don't put in X's, like, cause you could label it X for one side of it and X plus 15 for the other side because the length is 15 meters longer than the width, but you don't, you don't have to do that. Um, but what then what you can do is you can use the answer choices to help you figure out what, um, what would work for it to be a perimeter. So if you have X and X plus 15 um, labeled on there, then you can use the answer choices to plug in and guess and check. You also instead could say, oh, well, if I know that one side is X and the other side is X plus 15, then I know my perimeter is X plus X plus X15 plus X15 because there are four sides and two of them are the same and then the other two are the same. So then I can combine that and that is 4x plus 30. And I know that 4x plus 30 equals 90. So then I subtract 30 from both sides and I get 4x equals 60. So I know my x equals 15. Now, that x is the smaller side, but you know that because you've drawn the picture. So you know that that's not your length, that's not your longer side. And so then you take that 15 and you add it to 15, because that's on your picture, right? So x plus 15. And so then you then see that the length must be 30. So you pick answer choice C. Okay, so that's one way that we use pictures to help us. The other way that we use pictures is if the test gives you a picture, you want to use it. Because using the picture, even if you don't know how to do it math wise, you can still use the picture to help you um, make an educated guess. Because even though they say that the pictures aren't necessarily drawn to scale, they're almost always drawn to scale. So you can use the answer choices to help you estimate. So if we look at this one that's in front of you right now, it says for the given circle, if the inscribed triangle has a base of 12 and a height of nine, what is the diameter of the circle? Okay, so inscribed triangle means a triangle that's inside the circle, like touching the circle, um, and the circle goes right around it. So we see that this inscribed triangle goes through the center of the circle, right? Um, so the, the diameter goes through the center of the circle, and then we have those two side lengths that are labeled 12 and 9. So this is a Pythagorean theorem question. But if you don't remember your Pythagorean theorem, I'll go over Pythagorean theorem in a second, but if you don't remember your Pythagorean theorem, that's okay because you can actually use this picture to help you estimate. If you know that side length is 12 and then the other side length is nine, if it's the hypotenuse of the triangle, that hypotenuse is much longer than those other two sides, so we know it can't be A or B. And then answer choice E, 20, is super long. Like that's almost double the length of the 12, so then that's gonna be too long of an answer choice too. So then we're just deciding between 13 and 15. So we have a 50-50 shot of getting it right just by looking at the picture and not even doing any math. If we were gonna do it math-wise, what we would do is we would know that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So what we would do is we would do a squared, so we would take the nine squared, and that would be 81, plus 12 squared, which is 144, and Using our calculator, we have 81 plus 144 equals 225. 
So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we know that c squared equals 225. And the square root of 225 is 15. So then we know that our answer choice is D, 15. But that was one of the two answer choices we narrowed it down to. All right. So um, pictures, super helpful. Um, they really can help you get it right. Okay. The other thing that's really important to remember is that formulas are your friends too. If they give you a formula on the test, you need to use it. They don't give you extraneous information on the test. So formulas are super important. If they give you a formula, you will use it on the test. So for example, let's say they give you this question. Given that radioactive decay follows the formula R of T equals R sub zero times E to the negative lambda T. So the, that symbol that looks kind of like a wavelength, it's called lambda, um, where R of T is the decay rate at a time T in minutes, R sub zero is the initial decay rate and lambda is the decay constant. What is the rate of decay for a substance with an initial decay rate of 3.4 and a decay constant of 0 0.693 after two hours have passed? Okay, so for this one, we're just plugging in the numbers. So for R sub zero, we're gonna put in 3.4. For the lambda, which is the decay constant, we're gonna put in 0 0.693. And because it says two hours, but it tells us time is in minutes, we're gonna put in 120 minutes. And so we're gonna, and then we're going to plug all of that into our calculator. And that's how we're going to get this answer right. So you can use the formula to help you. Okay, now, um, so that, and then the, the second part, so that's an important part of things, right? So we want to use, um, we wanna use any formula that they give us in a question. Um, they don't give us extraneous information. The other thing that you need to do is memorize the packet of formulas that I have on the website. So you can see a link below in this video. So just make sure that that packet, so all of the formulas there are memorized. So like area of a circle, how do you sew Katoa, um, permutations versus combinations. Um, there are so many different concepts in math that are might be in the recesses of your brain but you want to bring them to the forefront like probability um or doing quadratic equations so all of those things come up on the test so if you look at that packet you memorize those concepts and those formulas that's a way to get things right even something as simple as the distance formula or the midpoint formula might be something that you haven't heard of or thought about for a long time. Um, they're simple concepts and they can help you get questions right if you just memorize them. So do put in the time for that. Okay, so what we talked about were pictures are your friends and formulas are your friends. So draw pictures, you use pictures, draw formulas and memorize your formulas and then you will get a lot more questions right. All right, last couple strategies, here we come. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below. We love to hear from you. Also, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button so that you won't miss out on any of our curriculum or other tips and tricks that can help you power up your ACT.